Good morning everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, as you can probably tell by the title of the video and the intro, we're going to be talking about the brand new SIG Juliet 3 micro magnifier. Now, as of recording this video, it has not launched on its own, it is currently only available in combination with the SIG Romeo MSR. I also have a review of this video or of this optic up on the channel if you want to check that out. But before we get into it, if you'd like to help out the channel in any way, you can of course like, share, and subscribe because that is free. I also sell AR500 steel plates on my website. It's the first link in the description. Uh, very high quality rifle rated plates. Uh, on top of that, I also run a subscribe star page, which is basically just a pro to a Patreon that has a ton of additional content on there, including like form one suppressor stuff and a bunch of other fun stuff coming soon. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first off, I should mention price, but price is a little bit difficult to mention when it's only available in a combination unit. Now, I picked both of these up for $250 from Borelli.com. Uh, with free shipping. So the SIG MSR is genuinely, generally anywhere from like 100 to 120 dollars. So if you do that math on the low end, this is going to be about 130 to 150 dollars uh, for a magnifier, for a 90 degree magnifier that comes with a bunch of different mounts. We'll go ahead and get into that. So first off, I believe this is pretty much the cheapest high quality magnifier on the market. Now, I do want to say that I have used the Vortex VMX3. I haven't used the new Vortex Micro Magnifier. Uh, and I've also used the Holosun HMX3 or whatever they call that one. And both of those are somewhat subpar in my opinion. Uh, compared to this one, we'll go ahead and start off with it. The most important thing with any magnifier is going to be glass. If the magnifier has bad glass, any optic that you look through, doesn't matter if your optic has bad glass, decent glass, or excellent glass, doesn't matter if your magnifier has bad glass, because again, you're just going to be looking through bad glass. The Sig Juliet 3 Micro. I can honestly say it's prismatic uh, and it has a seven degree field of view. It has basically no tint to it whatsoever. I have a lot of inset footage of it, so you'll be able to see it uh, for a lot of different optics looking through it. Um, is very, very good. It's nearly 100% clear. It's very, very crisp, which is one of the nice properties about a prismatic type scope. The only optic that I own that has better crisper glass than the SIG Juliet 3 Micro is the EOTech 512. EOTech has excellent glass. It is basically 100% clear with no distortion whatsoever. Uh, so the SIG Juliet 3 Micro is not, or I should say, does not hold back any optic that I own, anything that I would put behind it, or put in front of it, I should say. It is much better than a lot of other budget options on the market, which is one of its stand up features and very, very impressive. Now, the only downside that I've seen on the internet uh, people complain about with this optic is the short eye relief. This is a very, very small optic. Now, it's not lightweight. It's about uh, 11 ounces by itself, so it's actually fairly heavy. Um, but it's a fairly chunky little guy, but it has fairly short eye relief. Now the eye relief, as you can probably tell from the shooting footage, to get a full perfect crisp sight picture is about 2 to 2.2 inches. So that is very, very short. Now, a lot of the shooting that I've done with it, which I should mention, so I've shot probably 2,000 rounds uh, with the Sig Juliet 3 Micro attached. I've shot it with the SIG MSR, with the North Pack Ronin P12, with the SIG Romeo 5, and most of the time I'm running it on these UTG half inch riser mounts, and most of the time I'm either running it on the very last Picatinny section or the last Picatinny section, or sorry, the second from last Picatinny section. So there is a decent gap generally speaking when I'm running it. That way there, when I have my normal position, I can still flip this guy over and I don't have to crane my head so far forward to get a good sight picture on it. That is the one downside I would say uh, about this magnifier, but for those of you who don't know or haven't used a lot of other magnifiers, most super small prismatic magnifiers like this are very, very short in their eye relief, much like an ACOG, because again, it's a similar design. Now, what that means is you get a very compact optic, a very durable optic, and you also get really good glass and a decent field of view. 
The field of view that SIG claims on this is seven degrees. Now seven degrees is pretty good. It's, it's, it's actually very, very good for most optics. It's not the best for prismatic optics. For instance, there are some 3X uh, optics, I want to say the Swamp Fox 3X, I forget what they call it, the Tomahawk or the Blade or something like that. That one there has 10 degrees of field of view. Now 10 degrees of field of view is immense, is very, very huge. Now on a magnifier, it's not necessarily super important that you have a incredibly wide field of view because again you are mounting it behind a red dot. So if you have a super wide field of view, some of that is going to be occluded by the red dot in front of it. Uh, it. It would be nice to have a little bit more field of view. That's really the only genuine complaint that I would have about it is it's not uh, super wide at longer ranges so it doesn't give you a, a huge picture. But everything else surrounding it is very very good now if the weight is something that bothers you being at again like 10 11 ounces it's a fairly heavy even though it's very small it's fairly chunky if you combine it with something like the sig msr which is only five ounces that gives you a total package of 16 ounces for again a 1x perfect red dot and a magnifier so a one to three or even the Romeo 5 which is only like 6 ounces so that gives you like a 17 ounce total package and this riser is like 2 ounces by itself so about 19 ounces for a very tall mount setup that's very capable from anywhere from 0 to 300 yards. Now most of the shooting that I did with the magnifier installed um, was fairly close but then of course for this specific video as you'll see in the intro I put it on a couple different guns a 105556 5, with the EOTech 512 and a 105762 by 39 with the SIG Romeo 5 uh, shooting out to 300 yards on a 11 and a half by 20 target that's actually out of stock on my website if you can't, guys can't purchase one but uh, shooting out to 300 yards with a magnifier and a red dot or an EOTech or holographic reticle in this case uh, is fairly easy, especially if you're prone from a more stable shooting position. If you notice a lot of the shooting I was doing in the intro was not from a stable shooting position, uh, so it's much more difficult at like 300 yards or beyond. Uh, however, uh, in the prone position or a stable position, shooting at 300 yards with a red dot with a magnifier is very, very easy, especially something like 5.56 five, because with a 50 yard zero that I have with this and the half inch riser at 300 yards you're just hitting just a little bit low so it's it's very very easy to hit shots at 300 yards basically no issue whatsoever. Now something that I do want to say about the magnifier is that there is some parallax anytime you're looking through more glass so there's parallax on your red dots and then you're throwing this guy on there especially if you're throwing it in between different uh, rifles there can be some parallax error um, depending on how you have your head situated that sort of thing between gun to gun now that wasn't really a problem for me as you notice i was switching on the same day between the EOTech 512 and the SIG Romeo 5 and I didn't have any issues, I didn't have to re-zero uh, throwing on the magnifier between different guns, different optics, going out to again 300 yards without any issue. Now, uh, that's not really, at least in my opinion, the main draw of a magnifier. The main draw of them, because I mean you can hit 300 yard shots with out of magnifier with just a red dot especially if you know what target is especially if it's painted bright white or something like that the target that we were shooting at was painted black against a green background so it's not quite as uh, contrasted as like a white target that really stands out the main advantage of having a magnifier is being able to see your target and being able to put it a shot exactly where you want it so a lot of the times, uh, depending where you're shooting at, if you're shooting at known distances or if you're shooting at unknown distances or if you're trying to find a target, especially if you have like camouflage targets or something that's uh, not quite as obvious, having a magnifier allows you to make that identification. So 3x doesn't sound like a lot, but when compared to no magnification, even at like 50 to 75 yards, if you're looking at a target or even like a, a, um, a painted target or something that is meant to simulate like a bad guy or something like that, at 50 yards, you probably won't be able to tell whether or not that target has a gun, has a knife, uh, how they're looking, what exactly they're wearing, that sort of thing. But you throw on a magnifier, whether you're using it as a 90 degree offset, and so you're just looking through the magnifier itself without even uh, aiming at the target itself, 
or if you're using it behind your optic, it's, uh, it allows you to get a lot more information about your target. So for instance, a very simple test is at, you know, just draw a letter or a number on a target and place it at 50 yards, and you probably won't be able to read it without a magnifier. And it just goes to show that there's more information that you can get uh, with a magnifier than without it. And again, it doesn't really compromise the shooting experience all that much. I'll go ahead and put it here behind the EOTech 512 because it is a push button, 90 degree mount and a very good mount at that, a lot better than some other cheap magnifiers on the market. Um, when you're normally shooting, there's, there's nothing really obstructing your view. Sure, it's off to the right a little bit, but it's not really blocking your target or anything like that. It does add, as I mentioned, a little bit of weight, you know, 10, 11 ounces, something in that range. And if you need that extra magnification, just flip it right over. Now, uh, in my opinion, uh, and EOTech is a magnifier's best friend. All of these other red dots are two MOA dots, although I feel that in most lighting conditions, unless you have your dots set absolutely perfectly, these are more like three to four MOA dots, and that's just kind of the nature of red dots, is generally speaking, people have them a little brighter than they absolutely need to be, and so they, they're a little bit bigger than they normally would, or they have a little bit more flare or bloom to them. And EOTech has a one MOA center dot, and it is extremely precise. So under magnification, there is nothing better uh, than a EOTech holographic reticle, or by extension, the Vortex AMG Huey, or any other sort of holographic reticle with a one MOA center dot is gonna be much better under magnification than your standard red dot style. So an EOTech plus a magnifier, is a very, very good combination. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the mount a little bit because I haven't really mentioned that all that much. The mount is a 90 degree offset. It is a push button style, so you do need to depress on this little knob right here, which is very nicely knurled. It's very large, it's very easy to hit. Uh, I don't really miss it at all. Once you get used to the motion of, of, of throwing it left and right, it's very, very easy. The only thing that I would have liked to see is instead of a push button, a detent system so where you don't need to push a button at all you simply need to push enough force to lock it over and then enough force to flip it back out to the side and it would be held in place with like a detent or something like that that's a little bit more complicated of a system it's a little harder to get right uh, whereas just a 90 degree flip to lock and it locks up very very tightly uh, a lot of problems that i have with other budget magnifiers is they have a lot of wobble in their mount. Now this does have some movement, it's not 100% solid, but it's, its movement is very, very limited. So even if you're shooting fairly quickly, um, again, even with like something that's a little bit heavier, like 7.62 by 39, there's not a lot of movement in the dot, uh, which is really, really nice. If you're using a more budget magnifier and shooting the and the magnifier starts to wobble a little bit, your dot's gonna start moving up and down or left and right, and it's gonna be a lot harder to continue to shoot at a higher rate of fire than if the mount was, of course, more solid. So, now, on the mount itself, you do have a half-inch hex head with a locking washer on it, which is really nice. You also, of course, have a squared-off lug, and then you actually have a built-in recoil lug as well on this tiny little mount. So they do cram a lot on this tiny little mount that attaches to the 90 degree swing arm. Uh, really, really nice in my opinion. The machining quality on it is very, very nice. It's all aluminum construction. Um, it's either 7075 or 6061. Either one is very, very strong and industry standard. It's not gonna break on you. Um, as I mentioned, I've shot several thousand rounds through this, uh, about half 556 and about half 762 by 39. I haven't put it on a 308, but I'm sure it would do just fine on that as well. I have also dropped the optic accidentally several times. It has been submerged in mud in some of the B-roll and some of the shooting. Uh, you will notice that it is quite muddy, and that is because I accidentally dropped it into a mud puddle and uh, completely submerged it, not on purpose, but it happened. Um, and I've also have dropped it accidentally, and again, I'm not worried about breaking it. It's built basically like a tank. Prismatic optics tend to be very, very durable due to their design. Um, on top of that, as I mentioned, the machining quality on it, the design of the optic is very, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, SIG is doing an incredible job in some of their manufacturing. For instance, in some of their mounts, they actually have real radiuses, real curves, which are a lot harder to do when machining, and it just looks really, really good. So they're aesthetically pleasing, 
And on top of that, much more importantly, they've worked extremely well for me. All of the SIG more budget ends, the MSR Romeo 5, and now the um, Juliet 3 Micro, have done an excellent job in my opinion. Now to adjust the dot, because of course you do want to center the dot in the in the magnifier, there is a slight change between like the EOTech 512, uh, which is an absolute, or the Sig Romeo 5, which is a 153 mount, so it's a lower one third mount. And again, the MSR is also 141. So depending on what you're putting this behind, uh, there will the dot will move a little bit in the optics, so you do need to readjust it, uh, which takes which is really easy to do. You have your windage and your elevation. Now it should be noted that windage and elevation on here do not change your dot zero. It could have some slight effect on parallax because if you have to move your head a little bit more to see the dot or to get the dot uh, more centered, that could change your point of impact, but not the actual windage and elevation on here. That merely centers the dot in the glass. So that is important to do, but if it's close enough, you don't need to be worried about being a thousand percent zeroed on your magnifier, because again, it's not going to adjust the zero on your optics. Now, normally on optics, I would do a double drop test to see if they hold zero uh, or, you know, if they're durable enough and if they survive it, they don't damage the electronics, the glass, anything like that. As I mentioned, this has been dropped accidentally about three or four times because I've taken on and off and I slip because it's always wet where, where I'm shooting. And so this has been dropped many, many times and I didn't do a dedicated drop test on it simply because it wouldn't really tell me if zero shifted on the, uh, or the parallax shifted or anything like that on the magnifier, because again, that would be more of a test of the optic, not of the magnifier. And it's more than durable enough. It's IPX7 certified uh, for waterproofing, which I believe is a half hour at one meter, which is probably more than you'll ever do with a magnifier. I think that's, that's, that's more than enough, which is good. It's always good to have more than what you need. Um, so again, these are not released yet for individual sale, but I hope they are soon because they are very, very good. So again, I bought them with the MSR combo for $250 from Borelli. I don't think they're in stock there anymore. You can find them online for like 280 bucks. But if they can keep it to the 150 or less price point, I think that it is a exceptional amount of value. And as I mentioned, if you look at all these different setups, I've run it behind all of these and because I can just simply unscrew it and then screw it down behind some other magnifier or some other optic, it makes it extremely versatile. Uh, so just having one of these around and depending on your setup, most of my 10.5 guns don't need a magnifier. Most of my shooting is within 50 yards, doesn't really need a magnifier, but if I ever want one for whatever reason, this is an excellent option, 100% worth the money. Uh, very, very good value. The best value magnifier on the market pretty much. And I know there are some cheaper magnifiers out there that I've tested in the past, but they don't really do as good of a job and they don't have a lifetime warranty. This does have uh, SIGs, I think they call it their electric infinite uh, warranty or whatever. Basically it has a lifetime warranty. Something I haven't mentioned yet, is that I'm not using a spacer on this one. Uh, they do come with one, with, so it's a standard 141 to start with, and it also has a 153 and a 163 spacer. So you have a lot of different mounting options, which is really nice, I like that. Uh, I just always use the 141 and then just adjusted the dot as I needed it, so no big deal for me. But it is there if that is of interest to some of you guys. So when these come to market, if they come to market for really under $200, I would say absolutely pick one up if you need a magnifier. Again, for me personally, most of the time, like you don't need a magnifier on like a home defense gun or like a truck gun. Well, actually on a truck gun, you might want one because there could be certain situations where even if you're with pretty close, you know, 50, 60 yards away, you might need a little bit more information than you can get with just a red dot. So that extra magnification will help you out a lot. So again, it's a good option to have very very versatile and again if you don't want it all you do is take it off and put it on another gun that needs it more uh, so for the money absolutely excellent i don't really recommend the old vortex vmx3 magnifier uh, i've had two of those and they both kind of suck the glass quality is not that great the mount's not that great it's really wobbly uh, so really not worth the 200 dollars in my in my opinion the hollow sun is better but it does have a blue tint again as i mentioned in the beginning the glass on this optic is excellent i all of sig's optics are top notch especially for the money the only optic that i have that's better than this stuff is the eotech um in terms of glass quality it just does a really really good job so that's pretty much it for the video guys 
if and when they come out with the Sig Juliet 3 Micro as a standalone or with the MSR if you need a good red dot. But uh, when they come out as a standalone deal, uh, absolutely excellent, built like tanks, really, really good glass, solid mount, different mounting options. They have, again, as I mentioned, three different um, sight heights. So if you're using weird mounts, as I have three different sight heights right here. So again, it will work for whatever red dot that you have or holographic option, which is the best option for a magnifier in my opinion. But absolutely excellent optic, uh, no problems with it really whatsoever. The only two downsides I would say that you need to be aware of is one, it's a little heavy at like 10, 11 ounces, and it has short eye relief, which is fairly standard for magnifiers and prismatic optics of about two to two and a half inch, well, two to two and a quarter inches. It's it's barely tight. So uh, that's not really an option or an issue for me, but you need to keep that in mind if that will work for you. So that's about it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what other budget magnifiers are out there that I should test out if I haven't already tested them um, in a previous video. And like I said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace off.